The foothills of the Andes, the border between Argentina and Chile. Last August, the Canadian ski team spent two weeks at Barolochi in Argentina and two weeks at Portillo in Chile. They were here to train in winter snow conditions during the northern summer and to select a team for the coming World Cup season in Europe. Come on, guys, get in line here. Let's get this over with. Oh, geez, are we going to make it look like it's for real? They took with them ten men and nine women racers. Six were already members of previous World Cup squads. The others were on trial for the World Cup team. At the end of the month, another five would be chosen to go to Europe. Can you see everybody, Monaco? The women's coach was Lyndon McIntosh of Thunder Bay, Ontario. The men's, Scott Henderson. He was Canada's top racer until six years ago when a badly broken leg forced him to retire. Oh, no, it's not oh, just too dangerous. Kill them down, that's all. When you first get there, like a, uh, a downhill, a lot of your time is spent on preparing your course because it's important if you don't have a good course, you end up getting a lot of kids hurt, and uh, it takes a couple days of, of working on it to, to get it so that you can run it. Fortunately, in Berlochi, they do give us one hill that we can use, and they'll totally shut it off to the public. In North America, we just, uh, you know, there's uh, just nowhere we can go to have a downhill set up like that. This year in Berlochi, teams from Japan, Spain, Argentina, and Canada all shared the same course. The coaches are, are very easy to work with even though you may not speak the same language. We have no problem understanding and getting along and getting done what has to be done. When you're looking for a ski racer, uh, you're looking for his real desire for the craving of speed. He just wants to go faster. There's no way in the world that he wants to slow down. And so at first, you try and tone him down a bit because you know if you don't, then he's going to end up hurt. Did you get that? Yes, sir. Okay, who else is around up there? Okay, Joey, uh, looks good down here. Just be careful uh, when you're uh, trying to reach far forward sometimes. You look like that you're a little too stiff and you're bouncing. Try and reach forward, but let's try and uh, be like a noodle more or less. Uh, you look more like a rock. Every racer has fear. To overcome fear, you have to build up. You have to, like, run the course a couple times, and after running it, you gain your confidence, and then you can go faster. Those of you who have been here before will all agree that uh, this is the most valuable part of your whole year's training. In order to uh, get anything out of the summer training, you're going to have to put in 100% of your effort. You guys go hard. When I see you getting tired, we'll take a rest. The cost of getting us down here this summer is just outrageous. It's one-fourth of our total year budget. If you guys are trying hard, that's fine. 
if anybody isn't trying, jacking around, not doing what they're supposed to, they're going to get on the plane and they're going home right now. And they're out of the program completely. Skiing is a, is a sport that suppleness counts so much. Fluentness, not just brute strength where you go down and uh, uh, it's like comparing a weightlifter. Uh, when he goes to lift that weight, it's just instant strength right there. Ski racing is not that way. It's a power in a very subtle, a very fine touch to the snow. You don't want to hit hard on any one spot. You want to keep your momentum up. Sideways. Pulling yourself up with your stomach muscles. And your muscles in your thighs. Keep going a little farther all the time. Okay. Keep it up. Okay, from this position here, let's bring the foot up to his leg. Yeah, I can hear you. Who's that? That will be in Okay, yeah, he's over the knoll. Oh, no, yeah. No, that wasn't him. Oh, Betsy Clifford is from Old Chelsea, Quebec. In 1970, at age 16, she became the youngest person ever to win a world championship race. <laughs> from Trail, British Columbia, Gary Aiken. You want your carrot now or later? <laughs> Last year, he was North American champion on the Can-Am circuit, the final stage of competition before World Cup level. I only gave him a bit of a test. Toughest turn of the course right there when you try to stop. Phil Graves, Ottawa. This is his first year as a member of the Can-Am team. What do you think, boy? Is that it there or not? Yeah, I think so. How'd your skis feel on those turns that time? How'd they look? They look fine. They were light. It's getting really rough, though. Get through the three turns in the middle. It's pretty hard to keep him tight. I got way too tawdry on that turn before the transition. David Murray is from Vancouver, a downhill specialist with a promising first season on the World Cup squad. Well, good morning. <laughs> How would you compare the two before? Well, the difference is that I can get on the tails a lot quicker. With you. I mean, I can, get, I can get on the tails right now. You know, as soon as I buy a gate, the tail's gone, I'm gone. Jim Hunter, raised on a farm in Saskatchewan. Jungle Jim, as they call him, has been Canada's top racer for five years, since he was 16. I really feel it a lot quicker. Equipment becomes very personal to a racer. They come to depend on it. A special pair of skis, associated with past success, may be jealously guarded for years and only brought out on race days. Well, it's got to be just just tight enough so that, uh, you know, you don't have play, but... Is About the height, yes. Yeah. You see, you have to make sure you don't have any play that helps you to control your skills, but you have to make sure that your boot still it's free to move right. like that. It's so bad we're going to have to go. They, they closed the top part and they're running it to bring some stuff in the middle and that's it. And he said there's going to be no patrol man. Well, he tried to discourage me. He said, uh, well, I wouldn't close really, but, you know, you better go home. It's something like that, you know. Time lost through bad weather can't be made up in extra runs. Even on a good day, it can take a full eight hours to get in ten runs of downhill, a total of only 20 minutes skiing time. Okay. We'll have to just wait and see what happens. 
Hey, put the brakes on in this bus. Hey, 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 watch the bus. Stop the good. <laughs> I hope it's going to rain. <laughs> I mean snow very heavily. They lost six days altogether because of rain and fog. Okay, let's go home. And they also lost some of their skis. One afternoon, they arrive back at the hotel to find the ski room has been broken into. Eight pairs of skis are missing. Two of the men have lost some special downhill skis they're trying out against new equipment, part of their testing program for the World Cup season. Right here, in the package still. Alles neu. Alles neu. Die waren hier, aber die haben... They just took them with bindings. They took skis that had been used. Todos skis no, este calera. Estaban todos esto acomodado. Todos. Mientras tanto le cuento que... Later that afternoon, Scott appears on local television in a public appeal. He explains that the stolen skis are much longer than ordinary skis and are therefore useless to anyone but racers. Just tell him that his uh, uh, upper body is uh, quite a ways standing up. In other words, he's not really getting the arms forward and way over him, but uh, the skis are running well. There you go. One of the biggest fears is running into another person skiing or uh, a tree or a rock or something like that. It does get dangerous enough that eventually you, a lot of times you have to stop. You just can't run it because you can't see it. What? Go through the short section without losing any time. Okay, 10-4. Okay. Everybody? Yeah. I can't see a thing. What? Look at these things. You want me to go? No. Come on, jungle. Hunter start. No, he was good, but he was standing high last time, so uh, if he, you know, he can start working on trying to get lower. But uh, he came through here pretty good. His skis were carving. He was didn't have his hip into the hill. Mommy! <laughs> Two days after the theft, they get a message to come down to the police station. All the people at Verilochi together uh, were made aware of the fact that the skis were gone and uh, they were told to uh, inform the police immediately as soon as they found out and someone phoned them and uh, these officers went down and all the skis were there with the four thieves. Oh, we caught him red-handed. Thank you very much. Only two hockey teams in Argentina, one in Buenos Aires, the other in Bariloche. Last year, the Canadian ski team played the Bariloche team for the first time and won. Okay, let's go! This year, the local team had been practicing for two months. We got a little over anxious and let's say a little over cocky to start with and uh, before we knew it we were scoring goals in ourselves. First of all we're going to make them scared. Yeah. We shoot. shoot more. Yeah. Some of the guys took it a little more serious. Uh, Maybe because, like, Canadians in hockey just aren't supposed to lose, and, uh, uh, well, um, we got beat all right. We'll whip them next year. <coughs> 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 
¡Con la vida! ¡Oh! <risa> They've been in Argentina for 10 days. Today, they moved to Portillo in Chile. Each skier has several pairs of boots and poles and at least 10 pairs of skis. For 25 people, it amounts to two and a half tons of equipment. It's very difficult uh, in coaching to not be actually part of the group, yet still be enough a part of the group that you can get along with the individuals as one of them, and yet uh, still have a lot of respect from the individuals and have a lot of control over them. Okay, can you, hello, hello, please, can you stop me, please? Can you please stop your little fights here? <laughs> Will you please cut this out? And I would appreciate it if you keep the highway clear as much as possible. Okay? <laughs> we must maintain order. Okay, cut that out. Okay? Portillo is a long way from anywhere. 10,000 feet high in the Andes, on the border between Chile and Argentina. The Rockajack ski lift is unique to Portillo. It works up to the start of the downhill course, which is in an avalanche area. Conventional lifts can't operate here because of the steepness and continually shifting snow. You can reach speeds up to 90 miles an hour, although the average speed is usually around 50, 60 miles an hour for the whole course. It's just like a dream when you're actually doing things right, when everything is going fluent and you're just floating along as if you're on a cloud until you make a mistake and then everything just goes to pieces. Things come on you fast, you start to end up being thrown around and that's when it really gets dangerous. Benita Haining, from Calgary, was one of the first skiers down the course on an icy morning. She fell on a rough patch near the bottom, but she got off lightly with a mild concussion and a twisted knee. Nearby, on the same hill, the Chilean army are training their Alpine Corps. These soldiers have been skiing for only two months. Huh? <laughs> 
Andrea? What's the matter? Well, you seem like you don't like this stuff or something. I just, I, I can't do anything. Because all I'm trying to do is stay in the course. Yeah, but you're not loose. Myself. You're tighter than a brick. You know, you, you come off all these bumps pounding sideways. You've got to absorb the bump and push down with your legs. You can't just kind of be hopping off them. Because the ski won't turn in the air. And every time it hits, it just jars the hell out of you. Your chin bounces off your knees. That's why I say you got to stand up higher so your legs have room to work. Slalom is a completely different discipline from downhill. Slalom is a sprint. The skis are short and flexible for sharp, precise turns, 60 of them down a one-minute course. It's difficult to be good in both downhill and slalom, and in recent years, racers have tended to specialize in one event. So, crazy. one million. You owe me 950,000. Okay, mm -hmm. now, since we can't go back on the uh, 12th, yes. as we had hoped to, we're going to have to stay another four days longer. Well, to keep the kids up here for, um, you know, the time we've been here would have been 11 days on snow. Yeah. And I can see it already, it's too much. From now on, I'm not going to get much out of them. They're going downhill. Um, I, fe I really feel we got to get a break. Go get it! On the beach, at Viña del Mar in the middle of winter, the water temperature is under 50 degrees. That's 10 degrees Celsius. The Chileans thought the Canadians were crazy. On the last day of their stay, the Chilean ski championships. The Canadian team is invited to take part. Kathy Kreiner is from Timmins, Ontario. Whatever you wish. 22, 14, 14. 22, 14, 14. 22, 14, 14. Cambio. Pista. 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 Any time. Uh, you're on the court. Go no time. Good job. Stay on the ground. Keep moving. Hey! Hey! 37, 51, 81. Pista lista. 
No, it was good because you got into the rhythm right away, whereas Jungle and uh, oh, yeah. Steve went, you know, Steve wasn't bad, but Jungle just, and uh, Steve went way, or uh, Phil went way too straight. Phil did? Oh, yeah. You just, you know, you can't start off that way. You got to get into the rhythm and then you're all right. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> Andy, how did you do? All right. <laughs> What'd you finish? Uh, first, I think. Assuming these times are right, not screwed up like yesterday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not at all. <laughs> Final premio, el Mercurio, Armando Gelona, presidente del Consejo Nacional de Deportes y Comité Olímpico de Chile. Vamos a hacer entrega del premio donado por el Mercurio de Santiago. Yo te lo voy a dar por gringo. A ver, mamá. Esto se está transmitiendo vía satélite a todo el mundo. I am proposing that uh, I'd like to take you to Europe. I feel that you can handle all the slopes over there, and I feel that you've learned enough down here this summer to be able to cope with it. As to how long you're going to stay over there will depend entirely on you, how good a shape you're in, and how well you can handle the slopes over there. I want you to realize and be prepared that, uh, you know, if you ski well over there, if you can handle it, you'll stay. You know, but if you can't, uh, you know, it's just too much for you, then I, I would be risking your neck and telling you to stay there. So it's all up to you. Uh, one thing I want you to keep in mind is that, uh, you know, you're, you're only young yet. You're not going to kill the world the first time. Okay. You know, and uh, if you go over there and uh, if you get uh, whomped, you know, which, uh, you know, it'll happen. It's it's a matter of uh, you know experience and uh, you know just building up in ski racing. It takes time. Mm -hmm. wow. okay, everybody, just turn around. around. Oh. We'll get one facing the other way. Oh. 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 All right. Oh. 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 After 28 days, the program is complete. A team has been chosen, and they're ready to fly home. One winter is finished, another will soon begin. Just like dogs. Oh, my God, it was like me, Tinker. Cheese for all you guys and sex for Betsy. <laughs>